Hi, I'm Ian Alred, and we're going to talk about what is calculus. This is a question that a lot of students will ask me when they're getting ready to take the course, trying to make a decision, or even at the beginning of a course. Um, also, students in a lot of other classes like to ask this question because they really don't know. And it's really hard to explain, and calculus covers a lot of topics. So I can't really sum it up very quickly, um, but I want to do a couple of examples to kind of show you what um, calculus is useful for. So I have two graphs here. Um, the first one is a line or a linear function. And this is a straight line. Sometimes in graphs um, and math we use the word line and curve a little interchangeably um, but this is a function that's definitely not linear there could be all types of um, curved functions this here is a quadratic there could be rational functions exponentials roots um, but it's definitely not a straight line um, and you may have worked with both of these in the past, but you've probably worked with the linear more than um, curves or other types of functions. And the linear has a special property in the fact that it has a slope that is constant. Okay, so over here with the line, we'll say it has a constant slope. And what I mean by that is if I pick a point, and I'll pick two points on the line that are on cross sections, maybe these two points, 0, 3, and 3, 5, and this goes up to over 3. And if I go to the next place where it crosses, it also goes up to over 3. So this slope is two-thirds. <clears throat> you can get that from the graph up to over three. And no matter where I'm at on the graph, if I come up here to 12, 11, I can go over to 15, um, 13, it also goes up to over three. So lines have constant slope, and that's probably the only way you've ever talked about slope. Um, let's try and come over here to the curve, and curves don't have constant slopes. If I come right here and use the point zero, 02, and I try and go over three, one, two, three, it looks like I go up maybe about a half and then go over three. So my rise over run um, is a pretty small number. But if I come over here somewhere else, it looks like nine is in a nice place. But if I come over to nine, and I try and go over three, one, two, three. It looks like I go up one, two, three, four, and over three. So different places on a curve have a different slope. So you, you don't write a curve, a quadratic, a cube, a root, a rational function, an exponential, a logarithm um, with a slope in it because the slope or the rate of change, that's another word for slope, rate of change, is different in different places. So we could say over here that the slope or the rate of change changes as you move around. Um, and what we try to do in calculus is we try and quantify an equation that would let us figure out the slope anywhere on this curve. So just to kind of highlight something here, the slope at this point, I didn't do a good job here, but would look something like this, where the slope at this point would look something like this. Uh, would be flat, being um, at the origin about, excuse me, not the origin, but point zero 0.02, the slope would be about zero. And over when x was nine, the slope would be, like we said, about five thirds. So depending on where we are, we have a different slope. And we know we like to measure how things change <clears throat> because how things change can let us make decisions or predict models. And all graphs are are models of data. So we can use calculus to figure out the exact slope or the exact rate of change on curves. 
and that's one um, application that we'll be working with. So now let me show you a second application. Okay. So down here I have the same two graphs. <clears throat> uh, but what I want to talk about here is I want to talk about area. So once again, I've got the linear function over here, the line, and on the right I have the curve. So I have two graphs. One's a line, one's a curve. Um, if I wanted to break this down, and let's kind of take a region. Let's take the region from 0 to 5 under this curve bound by the x-axis. So I have this little region from 0 to 5 that I'm going to shade in. And if I want to find the area of this, it is not a difficult task if I've got a curve. Because what I can do is I can break that into, excuse me, if I have a straight line, it's not a difficult task. Um, I can break it in possibly to two figures I know how to handle. So I can break this bottom part into a rectangle, and I can break the other part into a triangle. So if I'm dealing with a straight line, I can um, break it into geometric figures that I usually have formulas for. Um, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and the area of a rectangle is length times width. So I could tell what that area is from zero to five because I'm dealing with regular geometric figures, and I can get the exact area. But in the other one, under the curve from zero to five, still learning my pen here. It is not a straight line, it's a curve. So I can't break it into a figure that would, or a set of figures that I already know how to find the area of. I may be able to take an estimate partly down here because I can make a rectangle out of the bottom part um, and do a length times width there. Um, but the part above y equals 2 was connected to the curve up here. Let me kind of shade it in a little bit different color here. This region up here has that curve, and that doesn't fit any of my geometric figures because the parabola that I've got graphed there does not make a circle. So it's not even that I could connect it to a circle in some way. Um, but what calculus will let me do is it will let me find the area and by area, I mean this total area under the curve, even the rectangle part, exactly. And that has uses if you think about um, building structures. You would need to know how much material you are um, going to need. Or if you are in finance and this curve followed sales, you could total up those sales um, based on the trend. So being able to find the area or the room underneath a curve is a very good application. And those two things are why we need calculus to start off with. We can take simple applications like slope, which is a rate of change, or area um, that we would be able to do with straight lines. And we can transfer that over once we learn some of our calculus concepts and do the same thing, um, but with curves. And that's where we're going. All right.